We're in a fucking alley. Because, a piss stained alley. Yeah, we didn't want to offend anyone, but uh, people have their windows open. Let's see how long this lasts. Imagine the fucking balls that it would take for a company to take someone's product and make it impossible to purchase, unless you also picked up some additional garbage on the side. Well, surprise, surprise, you don't have to. You don't You're have to imagine, <laughs> because <laughs> this is the gaming industry, and there are no limits in the lengths companies will go to squeeze every last drop of money out of your pocket. But this latest tactic might be the most egregious we've ever seen. And that's a hell of a statement coming from this fucking show. Peggy 18. So we've fought the pre-order battle on this show since the goddamn pilot episode, and we've only sidestepped a few times because, yeah, okay, sure, if you're 100% sure that you're going to love the game and you want to pre-download it or whatever, you want some ultra-specific bonus that they're giving out, fine. Go ahead, idiot. It's your money. Yeah. But a lot of the time, people can be a bit disappointed when they fork over the cash for a game. It gets released, and then it fucking sucks. Recent examples being Mass Effect and No Man's Sky. But there's that kind of pre-ordering, and then there's companies that are now pulling some crazy, sinister, evil, bundle bullshit. And it is time to stop. It's time to stop! Alright, so wh what the hell are we talking about? Well, in the dark of night over in America, and ironically at a perfect time for us here in Germany, online retailers took everyone by surprise when they unlocked the pre-orders for the highly sought after SNES Classic. And it should come as no surprise that almost immediately they were sold out, which Okay, isn't odd. This is obviously a highly sought after product and something of a fun item for Nintendo to stock regardless of whether or not it's officially a limited edition thing. It's not what they're putting their primary focus on as a company. It's just something cool for fans of classic games and isn't meant to be in every home. But when it starts getting sketchy is uh, when you see how certain companies are abusing consumer desire and profiting specifically off of this console's scarcity in a way that used to be reserved for dipshits who buy things for the sole purpose of flipping them for profit instead of actually being a fan of the release. They're not even real gamers. Yeah, they're not. That's the biggest they're not real point of gamers. all. They're not real gamers, no. and they should be banned. They're, they're pretending to be gamers from life. to get a boyfriend. So anyway, I guess we should do a bit of a backstory here, too, as well, because, you know, this isn't the first time that ThinkGeek has pulled this kind of shit, specifically with Nintendo, and uh, specifically with their limited console, retro console releases. And, and in, the, in case you didn't know, Guys, GameStop owns ThinkGeek. They bought them back in 2015, so that kind of helps explain the shitty practices being used here. Anyway, earlier this year, when it seemed utterly hopeless that you would get your hands on the NES Classic because they had been sold out for months, and then Nintendo stated that, well, we're just not going to be making it anymore. Sorry. Something magical happened. Out of nowhere, ThinkGeek was able to somehow find thousands of NES Classic consoles. Oh, the, I can't believe I forgot that I put these things here. Oh, geez. Yeah. So how they found them is up to you to figure out. But we're pretty sure that they didn't dig them up out of some landfill that ET uh, that they put all the ET games in for Atari or something. Or we don't think they fell off a truck. That would make Think Geek the Mafia. Yeah. A criminal enterprise. And they're not a criminal enterprise, it's guys. It's almost like they're they... a legitimate business. Yeah. Huh. I wonder if they held these things for a while and you know, maybe drove up the scarcity. Anyways, we're getting into conspiracy theory territory here, so we did enough of that last episode. Immediately, headlines were flying. Oh my god, you can now buy the NES Classic from a legit retailer. Back in stock! And uh, sure enough, oh, we had to move because like, we got yelled at by grandma. Yeah, she threw us She out. Hung, out of the, hung out of the window and she was had, like, some, yeah. <laughs> had some words I didn't understand, but they were aggressive. Anyways, uh, <laughs> sure enough, those NES class classics, they were there. This wasn't fake news, but something was odd about this whole situation. You couldn't just buy just the console for its retail price. Think Geek was forcing you to buy as a bundle, and it wasn't as if you were getting an extra controller or maybe even a, a carrying case or something. It appeared as though they uh, were just bundling shit loosely based on classic games that wasn't selling from their warehouse and jacking up the price so that they could profit off this garbage. That was just taking up space some- oh, hi, Brett. Oh, hi. Also, Brett's here. Hi. Uh, I mean, who wouldn't want a fucking life-size Mega Man helmet or a Tetris lamp? How could these products not be flying off the shelf like the NES Classic? It's stuff you can't just jam into a loot crate and yeah. dispose of. <laughs> there you go. 
So yeah, in order to buy one of the thousands of freshly found consoles, you had to fork over sometimes triple the price and somehow find a good use for a Zelda puzzle or a coffee mug or some shitty pens. It's all garbage. But how fucked is that? $220 for a NES Classic, but you now own a life-size Mega Man helmet. Rob Talbert made me buy one of those at uh, Comic-Con You're going to love the He's way like, you look. You'll, you'll sell it for double. It's still sitting in my closet. Yeah. Uh, imagine having guests over. <laughs> this is his life, actually. Yeah. Imagine having guests over and one of them finds her life-size Mega Man helmet or Zelda shield backpack. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I mean, I, I, just, I didn't want to just throw it out. I got, I got it when I was so desperate for a retro gaming system that I made the very responsible decision to pay over $200 for it. It's a level of embarrassment that is only slightly salvaged by the ability to allow your friends to play Super Mario Bros. 3 with a controller whose cable is about three feet long. Do you love Super Mario Bros.? Do you love playing it three inches from the screen? <laughs> well, buddy, I've got the console for you. Now, if we could play devil's advocate here for a second, we get it. The NES Classic had already been out for months, Nintendo stated that they weren't going to make any more, and the resale value on sites like eBay had been pretty consistent up to that point. Aside from being somewhat shady and an obvious ploy to clear some stock in their warehouse because they maybe they overestimated people's love of Nintendo related hand puppets, this is just pure capitalism, baby. But where it crosses the line, well, the line that Tugs has made, it's a completely arbitrary line that moves all the time, uh, that line is, is doing this for something that's not even fucking out yet. I think Geek no doubt had the information about when they could start pre orders at their disposal, and they knew that these things would sell out fast, and they probably, I mean, who's to say, but they could have held off uh, until they knew that they could price gouge people. And then, you know what they did, guys? Surprise, surprise. They pulled the same shit that they had done with the previous console once again, and they didn't even change the merchandise bundled with it. Guys, we got to get rid of these Zelda shields. <laughs> Somebody, Who would have thought that people wouldn't be buying these things left and right? 34-year-olds <laughs> with their Zelda backpacks to wear to conventions. Isn't it cool, though? Ooh. I can fit at least three things in it. <laughs> so this is without news as to how many will be produced, if there will be consoles available outside of pre-order for launch, if there will be future restocks, or if there is a hard set production period for the device. They basically just said, we know you want the goddamn consoles, you fucking pieces of shit, and we got them. You're going to have to continue clearing room in our warehouse and paying exorbitant prices in order to get your hands on one. It's fucked up, and no one should stand for these types of business practices, but sadly, that's not the case because the same people who complain about not wanting to pay for other people's health care by proxy bought up all of these bundles, and they're sold out. I don't think so. I protect me and mine with this cool Zelda sword. <laughs> who, who needs to worry about my neighbor's cancer treatment when I've got this Mario 1-Up lighting lamp? See my dying grandmother by the light up. <laughs> now, uh, Think Geek, aka GameStop and Dork's Clothing, can continue to play by their own rules until Nintendo steps in and tells them to cut it out, which could actually be a possibility at some point if enough people get tilted by it. I mean, we're close enough to Gamescom. I didn't feel like going over there today, but I wanted to just go up to someone at the Nintendo booth and be like, hey, do you know what Think Geek's doing with your fucking N like Super Nintendo class? You know they're just like, they're just making money off of like putting their garbage products next to it and being like, I mean, you want the console. <laughs> Take the fucking puzzle. Just narc them out to the German Nintendo rep who yeah. doesn't know what you're talking <laughs> Listen, about. I'm a journalist. I'm sure you can pass this information along, but what ThinkGeek is doing is probably not illegal, but kind of a dick move. <laughs> Unethical. Bad yeah, it's very bad optics for ThinkGeek. Now, speaking of appropriating vintage Nintendo bullshit and using it for your own bullshit, in an attempt to use the how-do-you-do-fellow-kids method of appealing to millennials in order to convince them to support policies, House Republicans released some clickbait-style memes meant to sway all the cool, hip gamers into questioning why we haven't had a rap about tax reform in a while. So they dropped this gem. What do The Legend of Zelda and the American Tax Code have in common? Short answer, absolutely nothing. Well, all right, maybe the tax code is confusing to some people in the same way that people get confused with uh, which one's Zelda and which one's Link, but that's not the point they went with. Instead, it was something that was factually inaccurate. Here's how they drew the comparison. The Legend of Zelda series is Nintendo's best-selling video game franchise enjoyed by more than two generations of gamers. The action-adventure game was released in 1986, only one year after Nintendo's founding in 1980. What? That's not true. <laughs> yeah. Nintendo was not founded in 1985, you fucking idiot. <laughs> And you know what else was released in 1986? 
Yeah, you do. The last major reform to the American tax code was signed into law in 1986. No one knows that. <laughs> First of all, yeah, no, I didn't know that. And second, Nintendo was founded in the late 1800s. Yeah, it was like a fucking playing card Yeah, company. Uh, of course, this is a stupid argument because, yeah, sure, Nintendo was founded back then, but it wasn't any work. They didn't even know this would exist. No. Oh, yeah, one day we're going to make a video game console and Think Geek's going to fucking use it to sell lamps. But... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, as far as the meme of liberal smarty pants bullshit goes, this is this is a pretty good example. Um, actually, Nintendo was founded in the 1800s. It is a lame attempt to convince uh, the youngins to get interested in tax code, sure. But but writing Republicans f for confusing the founding of the company with the release of their first console, it's not a stretch, but it is a fucking like it's one of those like it's petty. Yeah, just, it's bad. Uh, there's. Believe me, there's more important things to worry Believe about. Me. Yeah. Anyways, uh, they took the page down already, and now you'll just have to figure out the changes that they want to make to the tax code on your own. So, good work, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. But let's move on, because we have delicious Kolsch that needs to be consumed. Yeah. Now, in case you haven't noticed, we're currently in Cologne, Germany, moving from location to location after getting yelled at by old women. Yeah. And uh, we couple, over the week, we've spent some time on the show floor over at Gamescom looking at the very impressive billboards. You know, it's a, it's a big, beautiful building full of ads that we get to look at. I'm a, I'm a big we flew fan halfway of, around the world for big it. Big fan of BBAs, big, beautiful ads. Yeah. Yeah. We are actually kind of pretty upset, though, because we missed out on what would have been the coolest thing to see in real life, uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel playing Farming Simulator, <laughs> the most German game ever. Yeah. And based on her reaction, she's fucking loving it, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the face of nearly every farming simulator enthusiast while playing the game, no matter how much they love it. It's just pure concentration. Yeah. Yeah. Can't have a farm here in the city. Yeah. But you know what you can do? Download Farming Simulator 2017, which has all the latest farming equipment. Yeah. It is a great... You can come uh, home from when your you, shitty job You play and farm. games to, to jump into a fantasy world, and here in Germany, becoming a farmer to this day and age, for most people, ah. it's a fantasy. Yeah. So why not do it from the comfort of your home? Anyway, still, so it is great to see someone as high up on the world stage, arguably the current leader of the free world, <laughs> yeah. which hurts to say, enjoying the mediocrity of modern gaming. Oh, and here she is. Here she. They made her in Minecraft <laughs> yeah, as a, a tribute. It's adorable. Miss Merkel, we present you with your you were, Minecraft. <laughs> you made of blocks. Wait, hold us. Hold on. I thought video games looked a lot better than this now. <laughs> the, the farming game looks like a real farm. This looks like <laughs> This blocks. looks like shit. This is just blocks. <laughs> I am not impressed. Uh, anyways, aside from that, our focus here at Gamescom started with Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, but we quickly quickly realized that it was essentially pointless to try to see anything. They had a very small booth presence at the Xbox area, which itself was very small. We've come to the conclusion, based on what we've seen, that nobody here gives a shit about Microsoft. Anyways, uh, there was the PUBG Invitational, uh, and that was actually just in a square area that's sealed off from the public. So just watch it home on your phones, it's much better. Uh, but the, de the dev did release a new look at their desert map before the Invitational started, and uh, it looks intense. I'm excited. Now once the actual eSports events got started, uh, we got to see how this game is going to evolve into a legitimate sporting event, and the result was, well, here, just, just take a look for yourself. This is going to be fun. We've got Luminosity and the TSM guys just throwing it down the north. Sai Syndicate is posted up. He's safe. Drassel's there taking a fight. And right now it's going to be Molman actually getting pincered here. He's in a bit of a bother. He's got a player behind, player in front. He can't hide himself from both. And right now he's switched on to someone else. I'm not sure why. As Molman did got find the kill. He did get it done. Even though it's... Stop, look. Can we not look at these guys? Just, just a to punish them. Fan. I want to punish them for playing like this. How dare they? And they've literally just traded positions. Oh, sweet mother of God. Yeah, <laughs> so... Yeah, they got a uh, couple kinks to work out there. To be fair, it's an early access eSport for, for an early access game. What the fuck did you expect? They've got plenty of kinks everywhere to work out, so hopefully this was just a learning exercise. It was hilarious regardless, and they do have a few more events before Gamescom closes. So by the time this episode's up, they might have actually fixed everything, or maybe there's just way more cringe compilations of the uh, commentators just being frustrated yeah. that they can't watch All right, what they're and, looking uh, at. and drifters over. Oh, Jesus! I don't okay, know why now they we're watching a the guy in a boat. <laughs> uh, uh, can we go back to? Oh God, they, they their frustration is just palpable and delicious. I love it. Uh, but whatever, we're, we're tired from being on shitty sleep schedules. Let's hope to God that Shibby has done something this week and prepared some sort of review so that we can. Toss it over to him right now. Now, honestly, we have no idea if he's done anything. This is a complete shot in the dark. Shibby, 
Are you there? What are you talking about this week, buddy? Tugs boys and Tugs girls, this week I am free from my masters. Call me the breaker of chains because I'm not hashtag sponsored in Gamescom Germany. But here I am at the home base still eating ass and chugging piss colored G Fuel. And margarita mix. Ew. Other than that trash Call of Duty World War II beta, which Ellie and Ricky probably can't even access in Germany because it's banned or something, I recently played Uncharted Lost Legacy. <laughs> now, for you not in the know, yes, another Uncharted game came out. I know. Trust me, viewer, I know. After Uncharted 3, I was done. And then 4 came out, which was a complete slog to get through. About 16 hours of gameplay for a $60 price tag. Finally, with Uncharted Lost Legacy, a tighter experience coming in in about 8 or 9 hours. Now, viewer, when I say tight experience, the main character in the story is Chloe, which, who indeed is wet, dirty, sweaty, sexy waifu. What can I say? She has nice ass. That's. Anyways, how this game became to be its own standalone game is a bit bizarre. For those those of you who bought the Uncharted 4 Season Pass, ugh, which makes me sick to think about, actually it turned out to be pretty good value if you're a fan of the series. Basically, if you bought that Season Pass, which appeared to be completely trash at the time for some multiplayer bullshit and some eventual single player content, well, that single player content turned out to be this lost legacy. So Tugs Boy, if you bought that season pass, you basically got this $40 game for free, which you only spent about 20 or $25 on the original season pass. Huh, talk about value. Value is sort of like my shirts on Teespring if you're gonna make gaming great again. A number of you have, a number of you have already bought some sweet shibby shirts and I do appreciate that. So check the link in the description or on my Twitter bio to see more. Honestly, not having to play as Nathan Drake again is a refreshing experience. And as always, Naughty Dog has some incredibly good looking games. One thing that pisses me off about the other Uncharted games, especially 4, is the amazing vistas the game and the game camera would constantly force upon you. Yes, I get it. The game looks amazing and the design team at Naughty Dog does not suck ass. But enough, I don't need to see 70 different Vista cliff sides in one gameplay session. God damn. While it's not my intention to suck this game's dick, ugh, it has its problems. The Uncharted games have always had strictly mediocre shoot, mediocre, mediocre shooting mechanics. A lot of bullshit cover shooting, ducking to pop one guy with a few rounds, then hiding again as an entire army wants to pound you in the ass. Thankful if you get struck by three, four, five rounds to your head. Don't worry, viewer. Just dip back behind cover to heal up over time. Next level gameplay. But this has been the deal since basically the first Uncharted. Sometimes the cover is too sticky like a cum sock, and climbing puzzles just feel like you're holding the movement stick in some direction, which then baller shit happens, but the skill to make that shit happen was essentially nothing. These games are made for casual, casual console plebs. I get it. Ugh. Overall, this game is a tighter Uncharted experience instead of some mind-numbingly boring like the previous installments. It has hot waifu clickbait, which is great. I must rate this game uh, 0 out of 10 because the Uncharted series needs to stop and Naughty Dog needs to focus PC games instead. Holler at me. Need to move on. Move on. <laughs> All right, well, if, uh, if he did a review, that's great. If not, I'm sorry. He has no excuse. What a piece of shit. Anyways, we wanted to see what people thought about the NES Classic on Amazon, and uh, oh god, it's a minefield of people complaining about people reselling the console. Now, we did find one particularly well-rounded review, though. This one comes from Amazon Customer, and they've titled their review of the NES Classic, 80s Babies Raging. Here's what they had to say. <clears throat> it's a long one, Brett, so get ready. <laughs> For those of you who bought multiple consoles with the primary purpose to sell them at bloated prices, you guys are horrible. As a 34-year-old who grew up with the real NES, which was $99 at the time, mind you, you people are what is wrong with this country, especially during the holidays. Everyone wants to make money off of someone else's misery. In this case, not being able to play the games of our childhood. Oh, it's a travesty. <laughs> <This is laughs> Checking all the boxes. 
Yeah, sure, we can log into websites, wait frantically for that buy now button to turn yellow, only after pressing refresh so many times that our fingers are sore and our nerves are shot. But ah, when we finally see that button light up, it is Christmas, all right? Sitting in my pajamas, wiping the sleep out of my eyes with one hand, while trying desperately to purchase just one of these bad boys in the hopes of delighting the little girl that has been dormant inside of me for all things nostalgic. They! Uh, it yeah, is, I believe, yeah. Passioned girl game. Yeah, or a confused man. <laughs> They took away Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and made it into some strange CGI monstrosity. What they have done to Strawberry Shortcake is a crime. And don't get me started on what has happened to My Little Pony, which has turned into something disgustingly sexualized and just plain wrong. Where are the other 80s babies? It's unacceptable to have some hipster from Brooklyn making us pay upwards of $300 on Amazon for something that Nintendo should have given us a long time ago. Uh, can I jump in? They did give you this a long time ago. It was the original Nintendo. They literally gave this to you 25, 30 years ago, <laughs> whatever. Reading the, the uh, anguish of some 30-year-old this gamer person in this is public very plaza upset. is yeah. really embarrassing. Yeah. But, uh... That is where my real anger lies. Nintendo has done to us what is un-American and downright inhumane. They have forced us to turn on each other by dripping these consoles like a runny nose on a cold December morning. What is wrong with you, Nintendo? Surely you knew that these consoles would have caused a major uproar. You knew what you were doing. It's like you took us out on a first date, turned out to be the tall, handsome guy with a smile that made us say, oh my God, and talked with us until three in the morning, only to give us an incredible kiss at the end of the evening. What is this fucking review? I have no idea. <laughs> making us believe in love again. Making our hearts beat with red hot gushing blood. Making us stay awake all night so that we were useless the rest of the weekend. I couldn't even walk right after <laughs> after Nintendo came in and fucked me like a champ. But then we never saw you again. You left us breathless with want as we tried in vain to harass the employees of Best Buy, Walmart, GameStop, and Target. These poor employees saw us coming. 30-something year olds. Some of us dragging whiny children through the aisles. <laughs> Some of us bleary-eyed and slack-jawed, clenching bottles of water in our purses like we were in the desert, sweat on our brow as we fought the other disgruntled customers, only to find out that nope, we're sold out. We only receive six consoles. How does that go back to Nintendo like, taking her out on a date and fucking her really well? It's a winding analogy. Yeah, I don't think the analogy ever ended correctly. <laughs> Nintendo wouldn't... Never called you back. Anyway, it, it continues. Nintendo's just not that into you. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo ghosted your ass. Yeah, yeah. And, and who wouldn't with this kind of fucking review? <laughs> this is a giant red flag. <laughs> is this what you talked about on your date? Because I see why you didn't text yeah. you back. <laughs> well, I met this guy on Tinder, and then I just unloaded on him about the NES Classic and my problems I told about him it. it was inhumane. He must be a sexist prick, because <laughs> there is nothing wrong with me. Whew. And guess who bought those six consoles? The employees of said store, trying our luck on, this is just, wow. Trying our luck online was no better. We are trapped. If we want to play the games we were brought up on, we are forced to pay gouged out prices. Otherwise, it's back to other, more modern games via our consoles or Steam. Five-year-old me is throwing a silent tantrum in my room. No, I think you're doing it publicly and loud. 34-year-old. <laughs> yeah, now you're it. making us do it in Germany in a public place. <laughs> Upending furniture, screaming yeah. into my pillow, tears flowing down the sides of my face as I stare wantonly up at the ceiling. Only this time, I can't blame my mom. I can't blame my little sister. I can't even blame the stupid cartridges that I had to blow into to get to work, as if I was breathing the very life force of my being into them. I blame Nintendo. You guys let us down, big time. You have an entire task force of people whose job it is to anticipate your consumers and the market. You knew this would be the must-have item of the season, yet you marched out to the ice cream man, bought six Ninja Turtles sherbet popsicles with the gumball eyes, and gave them to the six brattiest kids you could find, while the rest of us stand on the curb watching them eat those popsicles. Some of us are throwing our grossest garbage pail kids at them in the hopes they get a massive paper cut. This is so embarrassing. Yeah. Some of us are furiously eating Pop Rocks, hoping they'll drop one or we could scoop it up. So, some, of, some of us are actually actually bargaining with them, trading all our He-Man and She-Ra and Thundercat action figures, our most prized possessions. For popsicles? I don't understand. And then there are some of us who will mount our rainbow bright bikes, give one last long withering glance, and ride off into the sunset until our moms call us in for dinner. One star. That is, uh, scary. Someone called an ambulance. Yeah. Nostalgia. You know dead. what? Maybe Think Geek's right. <laughs> maybe, maybe we deserve it. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> you know what? This person specifically deserves it. 
Yeah. And would lovingly wear that Mega Man helmet. Yeah, she'd be fucking thrilled, so. You see it? You see it? <laughs> it's the one from the game. Woof. No, it's not a, it's not a cheap uh, knockoff. It's actually officially licensed. <laughs> I'll show you the box. It's in my closet. Uh, anyways, you want some coffee? I'm serving it in my Mega Man mug that they gave me for pre-ordering this as well. Power up! Anyways, fuck you, Think Geek. Yeah. That's all I have to say. But also fuck us. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, since I was awake here in Germany, I did pre-order it successfully for the normal price. Nice. See, people like you are part of the problem. <laughs> Ugh. I'm gonna get the Japanese version, <laughs> so good luck with the that. The Famicom? Yeah, you know. Oh. That's right. Anyways, watch our other content. Uh, brand new episode of Weekly Weird News, brand new episode of Tech News Day. Uh, follow us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash etc underscore show. Where can people find you, Brett? Hey, youtube.com slash cowchop. Cowchop. He's got the esports on. We got the, we got the jerseys, we got the hats, we got the sweet merch. But you don't have a fucking uh, NES Classic. I don't. We don't have that. Just in our righteous indignation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, and I guess we're going to PAX. Oh, yeah, see you at PAX. We're going to be at PAX All next right. week, Friday and Saturday. PAX uh, Seattle. I live in a hotel. Yep. Yeah, we'll be there too for one day. I'm going to bring my NES Classic. <laughs> Try to make some deals. <laughs> what do you got, kid? Jesus. <laughs>